trick because it says restart now another time and then okay <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the third one <laughs> just have to find out tricks you into saying okay every time yeah. we have a question from oklahoma have you ever come across a fish graveyard well not necessarily oh, fish, but the whale fall you can look back at some of the video from the whale fall that was discovered was that last year two years ago i think both we've we've been revisiting it and those images and videos are available on our website under the gallery tab Do all the computers want to do an update right yeah, now? Yeah, all the computers are trying to update right now. <laughs> it's not. Remind me tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> we can just park the vehicles for a minute. Update oh, all, the, all the screens. Yeah. Restart everything. I'm sure <laughs> nothing ill will come of that. Nope. Yeah. One of our viewers was asking about the depth of Hercules right now, and you can see that on the right side of our website, live under live data. Hercules is 9,690 feet, which is 2,954 meters. And it's very cool. If you want more information about Dave, I'm pushing on the swimmer here. Statistics, you can click at the bottom of that column on where it says more data. That's good. And Thank find you. all kinds of cool info about the current dive conditions. Uh, go ahead and come forward, please. And I'm seeing locations of the classes because some of the students are putting their location. But we can also see stats of where people are logging in from, not specific, but what country they're coming from, which is really interesting to see that we have viewers all over the world. I'm going to try to get a cross over that ridge so we get more up it on the next move. Roger. Marble Wester, Westerly. Yeah, I'm just going to go 220. I think it should get us a little bit more up it. Roger that. So want to make it Jake, progress up a little bit there, please. Come down. Yeah. Yep. Come down. You said we're gonna two two zero. Uh yeah we're move. yeah we're still going two one zero for two, one, zero. and then we'll go two two zero. Roger. We have a viewer tuning in from Honolulu, where we left port. Aloha. <laughs> we have greetings from Birmingham, Alabama, and Norway. One of our viewers is asking about the shifts that we work. So we are assigned a shift beginning of the expedition and we work that shift four hours at a time. We have four hours on, four hour, eight hours off. And I think the answer to the question, what is the best shift? It's the one that you're on. Oh yeah. <laughs> How has it been adjusting to that 
for you. Lisa. It's been. I feel like I got the easy shift. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Eight to twelve is. It didn't take a lot of adjustment yeah. for my sleep schedule. I did have a three fifty a.m. classroom interaction this morning, though. <laughs> Bright and early. Yeah. Hello to our viewers in Corvallis, Oregon. Go Beavs. <laughs> We had a question about uh, the geology of the seamount in relationship to the main chain of islands. Anybody want to want to take that or wait for Alan? Uh, that's actually <laughs> part of the reason we're here. We're trying yeah. to figure out, um, you know, if we can get some evidence of, of how these seamounts were formed. So that's exactly why we're doing these transects um, and periodic sampling uh, all along the seamount so we can both look at the crust and uh, infer relative age um, of the seamounts, uh, but it also might tell us if if they were formed from the same uh, or similar mantle plume uh, as the Hawaiian Islands, um, or if they were formed uh, from from a different phenomenon. So we're looking at whether or not they're 116 million years old or maybe 10 million <laughs> years old. So stay tuned. For those of you who just joined, we have a viewer asking how far into the dive are we? And did the dive happen right around midnight? And right at midnight we got in the water, yeah. We anticipate being in the water for at least 24 hours. Been in a weather delay for two days, so everybody's really happy to be back on the dive. I suspect it might go a little longer than 24 hours. And we've got, let's see, we've got to leave for port. Um, early morning Hawaii time uh, on the 19th. So I think we're, we're planning to get this dive and at least two more long dives and after this one. Bridge enough. 100 meters bearing 230. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Do we see what that was over there? I don't know if anybody. I'm sorry. Yeah. What was? Uh, were you looking at? I just called it. Uh, to an the an right. Anemone. I didn't. Was know. it an anemone? I think so. Looked like one. Yeah. Yeah. Seems pretty. Stuck. Sand dweller. Yeah. The crinoid above it here. There's a swimming one. Yeah. Oh, that's so cute. I love that motion. So cool. It's mesmerizing. Yeah. You can do a quick partial zoom on this guy. Can we turn the lasers off for a beauty shot too? Yep. Pretty hypnotizing. Yeah. Oh. I don't, I don't think we've seen that, whatever that anemone was before. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> All right, 
Go ahead and tell them why it's showing off. Dave. Very pretty. Going in for a landing? <laughs> yeah. You guys want to see that anemone really quickly? If you can maneuver over. Yep. That was great flying, Jess, yeah, following great. that. Especially yeah. when I zoom in and, and restrict your field of view. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Awesome shot. I have one hot second to get this anemone here. And then Thank we'll you for entertaining me, Jess. <laughs> I just don't recall seeing one like this yet. Or if it's an urchin, what are you? Looks like oh. enemy. Enemy with some really long tentacles on it. It's like flat right in there. Yeah. Huh. Good. Until we're looking at a shadow on some of the sediment, or yeah. So have we seen this? I don't think no, we have. Maybe not. I don't think we've seen this type yeah. before. Sorry, I'm going to bump up a little. It looks similar to that blackish purple one we've seen, but obviously different color and less like the other anemone. Got any more zoom? Yeah. Thanks, Dave. I'll have to pick up and go pretty soon, but yeah. this is a pretty cool one. Yeah. Yep. All right. We'll hide Steve there, please, Steve. Steve can get an idea on that. I'll boogie. Steve went back to bed. Oh, okay. At least we got a good shot of it. Yeah. For ID later. Sorry, guys. I'm going to boogie ahead a little bit, and then we'll be in a more stable position for more zooms. Do you mind centering up there? How fast is yeah, a yeah. boogie? You know, let's do a point four knot boogie. <laughs> You can, I believe in you. You can punch oh. it more than that. ROV pilots, I have a question for you <laughs> if you are available. Sure. The viewers would like to know, what are your responsibilities on days where we have no dives? Um, we usually maintain the vehicles. And when we're not maintaining the vehicles, we're maybe we're doing inventory, things like this as well, or just plain cribbage. So it really depends <laughs> on the day. Yeah. A lot of uh, off-season maintenance tasks and stuff uh, of that of that sense as well. So like replacing uh, cables and connectors that have uh, been worn down over time or um, servicing parts that may have been uh, maybe malfunctioning or not working as, as they should have, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, also, we have a lot of tools and stuff in the shop and on the deck, so we tend to maintain those and make sure we have you know everything inventories and stuff. So. Yep. This is also the last expedition of 2021 for us, so uh, our ROV team has and everybody has a bit of a punch list for things that we need to do to uh, before the ship kind of buttons up for about a month before we all come back and start up the 2022 field season. So a lot of people are starting to work away on those checklists when we have some extra time. One of our viewers is asking how many people are on the ship? What's our exact count? We have 48 people on board right now. And we can we can bring up to 50 on for a, for a full ship. Can we take a look at that white sponge bottom left? Yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Jake. Looks like Ferreira of some kind. Yeah. Okay, there's three generations here, huh? Yeah. All right, go ahead and push on in there a bit, please, Dave. We got this generation here. Steve, yeah. said, Steve says it's a Freya glass sponge. Bingo card for you there, Annie. Yes. <laughs> what about the anemone? Yeah. Do you know about that? Uh, <laughs> he did not comment. Yeah, I want to know.
A little shrimp in it. Yeah. Oh. I got the dead stuff behind it. Go up and partial wide there, please, tape. That's great. Anything else you want to see on this sponge here, or else I'll keep moving? Uh, no, we're good. Okay, pull away, please. I think you can go two, up three. slope as we go two three zero. I think you can head more west up that slope, and we'll Roger. Yeah, get a little bit of it. Get ahead of Argus in front of the slope. Yeah. Also, Jake, see if you there's come? anything exciting up there. Yeah. Jake, you want to come to 230? 230. Roger. One of our viewers asked if the Nautilus is a comfortable ship to live on. And I would say yes. It's We have uh, cabins that will hold two to four people, some with bunks. We have a gym we can use. And there are a lot of Places to sit and enjoy the sunset, sunrise up on the monkey deck. Great food. We do have cook on the ship. They take great care of us. Three meals a day, buffet style. The challenge is not eating too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you try to not eat too much, and they, they feed, <laughs> make a plate <laughs> for you behind your back. <laughs> Some mush anthemastis and a stalked crinoid. Renny, when when's your uh, PhD program start? <laughs> <laughs> in, in what subject <laughs> would that be? Biology. <laughs> Is that a sea cucumber there? Uh, uh, the pink that. one? Yeah. It's really hiding under there. Yeah. That looks like a sea cucumber. Yeah. Yeah. Do a quick partial there, Dave. Very cool color. That rock yeah. looks like a like a pit bull or a rab labrador. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So is that a sea cucumber? Oh, I see it. Now. I yeah, just I had to squint. <laughs> All right, pull away there, please. There was some more of that like mucus stuff nearby. Oh, the mucusy spider web thing. Yeah. Cool. Do we know what that comes from yet? I don't know. I don't think so. One of the great mysteries still. Allison, I think this is a great question for you. One of our viewers asked, when it comes to the data and the research released, what would be the best journal or place to find papers released from the data on the expeditions? Large oh gosh, uh, that's a good question. It's, uh, I don't think there's any one publication that you can necessarily go to, um, but so all of our data and samples that we collect uh, are open access. So we want to make it broadly available to any researcher that's interested in using both the data and the, um, the samples that we collect. So all of our rock samples go to a repository at the University of Rhode Island, which is funded by the National Science Foundation. And all of our biological samples go to uh, the Harvard Museum of Comparative Zoology. And all of our uh, data goes to various uh, repositories. Um, but we there's a, a repository called uh, Rolling Deck to Repository, R2R, uh, that's hosted by Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. Um, and so you can go to that link and, and find, uh, oftentimes you can find uh, all of the data that's collected on any individual expedition. Um, and our hope is that when people do publish with our data, uh, they feed back to those repositories and provide the, the links back to those publications, so the DOI links, um, so we can maintain a running record of that. Uh, but on our website, we do uh, maintain, uh, uh, to be the best of our knowledge, um, some of the, the recent publications that, are, that have been coming out. And we often 
post that to our social media as well. So I would say the best place to look um, is probably on our website and our social media for publications that come out. Um, those often uh, take some time following the expedition because analysis takes time. Um, so it can be uh, a year or years after an expedition uh, before those publications come out. Um, and then we also, on an annual basis, uh, write uh, a, a annual report uh, with the Oceanography Society. Um, and so you can see the preliminary summaries of all of our expeditions um, if you go to tos.org um, and, and look at, uh, look for the, um, the it's a, called a supplement for uh, ocean exploration. So we're working on our 2022 uh publication with the Oceanography Society right now. Uh, and those are all linked on our website as well. If you go to individual expeditions, you can get a link directly to the tos.org website. All right, Renny, ready for another ID? On this. Can we zoom on that? Yeah, we're going to need to. Let's get a little closer. Looks like the polyps are closed, or possibly some of them are predated. Go ahead and push that in there, please, Dave. Bump up here. I don't know. The branching morphology looks like primnoid, but the polyps, I don't know. Sarah, what do you think? I think it's another norella. A norella primnoid? Only two open polyps, everyone else is closed. Yeah. All right, full line there, please. What do we have for biology samples so far? The next move will be two one zero. Be hopefully up at Roger. I don't want to go to the other side of it really. Steve is giving you props. He said I didn't even have time to write it in that time. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for texting me before beforehand, Steve. <laughs> One of our viewers is asking if anyone is new to the crew, and I definitely am. We have a few other, a couple, an intern who's new, and our guest scientists. How many would you say, Allison, are new? Um, I think we have at least five people that are new to Nautilus. I think it's a pretty safe bet. Any expedition on Nautilus, you're going to have people that are new to Nautilus. That's Part of our mission is to uh, make this opportunity available to, to more and more people. Uh, so through our education programs, through science communication fellowship and internship program, um, as well as just increasing the number of scientists that we work with, um, we're, we're, we're always bringing new people out, some that have never sailed before uh, on any ship, some that are just new to Nautilus and have previous experience with uh, some of our colleagues that operate other vessels. Um, but
for our experience crew, we have a question. What has been your all-time favorite dive location? Tough question. Uh -huh. I'm partial to the uh, Endeavour vent field off of Vancouver Island. Mm -hmm. uh, it was Good one on. of the first places that I went to on the University of Washington ships, the Thompson, uh, in 2005. And I just back, went back there again uh, on one of our uh, Ocean Network Canada dives uh, last season. So it was 15 years after uh, my first dive on the Endeavour. I'll say generally anywhere that we can go that has interesting features that are previously unmapped in high resolution and then unexplored with ROVs. So the Riviera Gato Islands, um, a couple of years, 2018, the um, Papa Hanao the first time we were in the monument, and then um, these two expeditions on... Um, Lu'ua, Ea, Ahiki'i, Keikoa, Lono Kai, and the, uh, with both within the monument and just outside with these seamount chains. It's pretty exciting to have very limited knowledge and then kind of leave the, a cruise with so much more than you had before. I would say diving on the USS Independence was quite um, incredible to see all those sponges and something that almost like a ghost on the bottom of the ocean with a bunch of life living on it now. Off of San Francisco, I believe. Yeah, not far off San Francisco at all. It's in the Greater Farallones National Marine Sanctuary. I'm struggling to pick a favorite over here. I, I don't know. You could probably do They're top three. Good. <laughs> well, I came in as a geologist, and I think one of the things that I love about what we do is just the breadth of what we do. So, as Jess was saying, you know, getting to do some of the maritime history and more cultural aspects. Um, but I just, I, I love that we get to pull in a very interdisciplinary approach to our exploration and prioritize biology and geology and. Uh, maritime history and, and archaeology. So, wherever we are is my favorite. I will <laughs> take the easy road out. It's a good answer. <laughs> I am with Dave, though. I love Endeavor Ventfield. Yeah. have some viewers curious about our meals. We don't know what's for lunch yet. We'll find out <laughs> about an hour and a half. Um, I'm, I think I'll be having a scolding. <laughs> <laughs> you better take seconds. <laughs> Renny's getting his breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> and a week's worth of ba back breakfasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big pile of tater tots. Yeah. <laughs> And favorite meals on the ship? Favorite meals? Mm. Lentils. Uh -huh. Which there have been sparse lentils. There's been split peas, but not. It's a big hold fast there. Yeah. Dave, go ahead and do a partial on this guy. Here. It depends on the cooks that we have on board. It We get a big variety of meals with the uh, cooks that were previously on board. We had uh, we had curry Thursdays. That was, I always like the curries. Yeah, that sounds good. I think I'm very partial to the borscht. Mm. It's my all-time favorite coming out. Or any soup, really. The soups are usually pretty good. I don't mind burger day. <laughs> so is that your favorite day there, Jake? I don't know. I just, you know, when, when it's burger day, I get excited. <laughs> Red. Oh, I'd please. He's a simple man. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Get all the fixings. I really like the salads and the fresh fruit, especially the pineapple. Yeah. One of our viewers is asking how often we stream, and we stream when we have a live dive, and then we continue streaming. Um, you can watch the wet lab view and once Herc has been recovered, see processing of samples. And we'll be live streaming through December 20th this year, and then we'll pick our live stream back up in early to mid-February next year. We had a viewer asking about the next expedition. <coughs> Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, next next year, uh, we're, we're starting earlier than we've ever started, so um, many of us will be returning to just kind of dust things off after a quick month-long break after we all go home after this expedition. Um, and so we'll be starting our 2022 season in February next year, uh, so not too long in between expeditions. Um, but next year we'll start off, we're going to be returning to Kingman Reef and Palmyra Atoll. And uh, we'll also be visiting... Um, I just blank. Johnston. <laughs> Johnston at all. Thank you. Yeah. Usually see a spreadsheet in front of me and it just went, went blank. Um, and then uh, we'll be doing um, some, uh, we'll actually be returning to the Papahana Makuakea Marine National Monument. Um, some of the mapping work that we did this year uh, was in uh, to set up some of the, the ROV dives that we'll be conducting along the Lilikalani uh, Ridge uh, next year. Um, so we'll be following that mapping expedition and really using all that data that we collected this year to inform where we're going to be diving. And uh, following that, we're going to be doing um, some technology demonstrations uh, as part of our work with the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute. So our partners from Woods Hole, um, University of Na New Hampshire, and uh, University of Southern Mississippi are going to be joining us on board uh, with a variety of technologies. Um, so that'll be divided into two separate legs. Uh, the first leg will have uh, University of New Hampshire's uh, autonomous uh, vehicle. It's called a Drix on board. Um, it's a pretty fast moving uh, surface vessel uh, that's able to, to map at fairly high speeds and for a pretty long endurance. Um, so similar, if you're a longtime follower, you've uh, seen one of their previous uh, autonomous surface vessels out with us named Ben, uh, which we also recently worked uh, with the sanctuaries and uh, uh, the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary with. Um, so we'll have the Drix vehicle on board. Uh, we'll also have uh, returning to Nautilus, uh, Woods, Hole, Woods Hole's Oceanographic Institute's uh, Nereid under ice vehicle um, and the Mesobot vehicle. So all three of those vehicles will be on board at the same time. And then the following uh, cruise leg will have uh, the Drix vehicle still on board, uh, accompanied by the University of Southern Mississippi's Eagle Ray uh, autonomous uh, underwater vehicle. And then after that, we're going to be actually starting up a new program that will have us both mapping deep water uh, overnight and then exploring some of the shallow regions uh, of the Papahano Makuakea Marine National Monument during the day. Um, we're gonna be incorporating scuba diving for the first time into our program um, as we a start coral. a new coral reef program. Wow, sounds very exciting. I haven't been seeing too many black corals. Here's one. No. Our viewers asking what time it is here. It is almost 10.30 a.m. Go ahead and push that on there, please. <laughs> the winch box is moving again. Stay over here. On the move. It's a tall sponge in Argus coming up. Oh, yeah, let's go look at that. All right, full wide there, please, Dave.
some of our viewers missed our epic introduction <laughs> and we're, they are wondering where <laughs> we are from. I will start that. I am from Lawrence, Kansas. Grew up in Texas near San Antonio, but now live in Lawrence, Kansas. Good town. Yeah. Uh, this is Allison Fundus. I live in Northern California in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, originally from Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm Sarah Bremer, sitting in the data logger chair. I am, grew up in New Mexico, and I'm currently living in Madison, Wisconsin. Go ahead and do a partial here, Dave. Can we also turn the lasers off for a off. beauty shot? Turn it off. One step ahead. So this is Renato Kane. I'm from Wilmington, Delaware. I currently live in Santa Monica, Southern California, Los Angeles. <laughs> Go pirouette around this guy too. Yep. Is this a euplectelid? Or am oh, I? Oh, it's hard to tell from this. This I sign. think. Uh, are they stalked, or am I totally wrong? Steve is saying that Chris is going to be disappointed that this one might beat the size for both NA134 and NA135. Uh, well. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. Oh, the little. Sp oh, the speck. The yeah, it's been, it's been there. Yeah. Yeah. Nice flying, Jess. Thanks, guys. Mind if I swing around so we can see how big it is? Sure thing. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Longer than Hercules. Steve, Steve yeah. thinks it's Colophacus. Can you come full wide there, please? That was a very long guy there. Yeah. That one's easy to remember, like cauliflower. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except for one. Yeah, like a come back to 210. Yeah, I probably gotta buggy real yep. quick to yeah. catch up. Uh, are we still on hometowns? Yeah. Uh, Dave Robertson, video. Uh, originally from Seattle, Washington. Spent most of my career in Anchorage, Alaska. And uh, I'm in the process, my wife and I are in the process of relocating to the coast of Oregon, in Florence, Oregon. Immediately due west of Eugene. Uh, Jake Bonney. I'm from Barrington, Rhode Island. Uh, I currently live in Rhode Island as well. Um, small little town, small little state. <laughs> uh, yep. I'm, I'm Jess Sandoval, and I'm from California. I've been bouncing around California for a while. Um, yeah, closer towards Sacramento, area if anyone's familiar with shingle springs um that sounds like a made-up town <laughs> <laughs> that's from the movie cars <laughs> <laughs> it very well could be <laughs> um lived in san diego for the past about six years and now going over to boston has that been six years wow <laughs> Is this, ooh, is this Metallagorgia? Mm, maybe. Let's see here. 
looks like the same consistency as those bottle brush corals. Could just be a chrysogorgia. Yeah. Just a chrysogorgia. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Looks like you're right, Jess. Go ahead and push out in there a bit, please, Angle Dave. Angle before it looks more exciting. It's a crab on it. Is that what that is? Yeah. Squatty? Squat lobster? I don't know if it's a squat lobster or a crab. It's got big, long arms. Oh, yeah. Sorry there, Dave. Fuzz on the end of the claws. Oh, yeah. Make them a little wide there, Dave. That's great. So you can tell when I finally get the focus right, you can see the fuzz. Yeah. Yeah. To get moving soon, but... Steve okay. says we can tell this is Chrysogorgia because of the associate pairing. In this case, oh. the squat lobster gives away its identity. Oh, why there, please, Dave? Fish. Fish. I guess he's on our path. <laughs> <laughs> it's another one with a just really no coloration or like very light. Yeah. Different Ghostly. than what we've seen. Yeah. Alright, I'll catch up here. Two and five, Raj. One of our Come viewers is, there, Jake? is asking how many hours a day the ROV is active and underwater and when it dives it's usually 24 hours minimum um it really varies depending on the expedition and the objectives and the depth that we're diving to um so on this expedition we've been doing fairly long dives at least 24 hours uh, a dive but there's some expeditions where what, Rennie, on the last cruise, you were generally doing 12-hour dives, right? That's right, yeah, 12-hour dives. So we've been, I think our record is around 72 hours, so about three days underwater. So, I mean, as long as uh, the vehicle is healthy and there's no, no issues that we need to bring it up uh, for maintenance and we've got enough room for, for samples, um, we can we can stay down uh, for as long as uh we want because everything the the vehicle is powered uh, from the ship and everything is all of that power and communication is through all through the tether. Um, okay. So long dives are nice because we get really get into a nice uh, rhythm on board the ship. And what's the future of ROV dives past four thousand meters? Uh, the future of ROV dives past 4,000 meters. Well, I, the future for OET. Um, so Her Hercules is limited to 4,000 meters right now. Um, Argus, however, uh, can go to 6,000 meters. And we also have a small version of Hercules called uh, ROV Little Herc, uh, which can also go down to 6,000 meters. Uh, it's an imaging ROV. So, so we're, we're capable of going uh, to depths as deep as 6,000 meters uh, from Nautilus. Um, there, there are other groups that have uh, deeper diving uh, submersibles, uh, but from Nautilus we're, uh, we're limited to 6,000 meters and with Hercules uh, down to 4,000 meters at this point. But the future, maybe a new vehicle, um, maybe a little bit deeper, so we'll, we'll see.
ROV pilots, could you take a question? Sure. Um, are there any things that you do to um, make sure we're not doing any damage to the ecosystem or to or wildlife in the area? One of the viewers wants to know. Um, so one thing we do is we our, our steel plates that we use, uh, they that we drop, uh, they corrode over time. Uh, we also use a lot of hemp um, on, uh, to, as uh, tie downs instead of uh, tie wraps or uh, um, electrical tape or plastic um, because hemp also um, wastes away over time. So um, try not to uh, Can we look at the, the environment. Can coral to the right, Jess? Yeah, sure. Thing. Uh, with things that go on our vehicle. Ooh, what is that back there? Which one do you guys want to look at? The red one or the white one? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Red. Well, maybe you can get them both in the same screen then. All right, Dave, you want to look at this guy first? So another pronoid? Yeah. All right. And then if you want to come a little wide there, then we'll look down. Some sort of Chrysogorgia to the right. Yeah. It seems. I'm just picturing Steve grinning yeah, with shown in there, please. <laughs> proud proud dad moments on the yeah. left right <laughs> now with granny. Gives me a pep talk before I come up here. <laughs> Gives you a pep talk. <laughs> Really beautiful, the way that the branching is on this one. Yeah, yeah. Axis is a different color too. The zigzags and then, but all the polyps are like perfectly placed, so they're like almost equidistant from a mm -hmm. planar view. Steve says, "Come on, you got this, team." So I don't think we've called it yet. <laughs> it's not. It's, I mean, is it a Chrysogorgia? And if so, what? Is it a Golden coral? Can I cheat? Can I look in your guide, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm about to pick up and move. Yeah. Oh, I please. I should really look at those guides. So I'll be better at this. It's like in Star Wars when a character dies and then they like astrally project themselves. That's what Steve's doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to kill you off for the purpose yeah, of that joke, <laughs> but it was worth it. I think. A rough analogy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of animosity since he's been off for a shift, I think. Here. Yeah. One of our viewers is asking if. Uh, you ever wash the ROVs between dives oh, so yeah. as to not contaminate another dive area? Yep. Uh, every, every, time? T every time the vehicles are on deck, I wash down both Argus and Hercules. Give it a bath. And another viewer is asking, what is the science station seen behind the back row? And right back here, you can see this is our studio for live interactions. I am science communication fellow, so my other job, other than sitting on dive watch, is to uh, go into classrooms around the world and share the exciting ex uh, ocean exploration that's happening live with students. We have, as, have had as many as 12 of those interactions a day. I just did one this morning at 3.50 a.m. 12 interactions, wow. Yeah, it's a lot. That's a lot. 
Thank you for staying awake on our watch. <laughs> I did a couple of late nighters, one in Czech Republic and one in South Korea. Those were both so awesome. Oh. Very cool. What age uh, students were they? Those were the South Korean classroom. Those were middle school students. And they had already written questions out. They had a great list of questions for and Czech Republic was high school students, also so attentive and engaged. And to start their day, instead of a bell in their school, they have a gong, which is really fun. Oh, that's cool. We get to hear the gong. <laughs> yep. And if you are a teacher or know of a classroom who would be interested in having a ship to shore live interaction, we're full, unless you are probably in the Hawaiian Islands. We have openings in our afternoon schedule, but um, you can go into our website and request to uh, set up a live classroom interaction. And it would probably be for the next season at this point, starting in February. Yeah, we'll be opening up more opportunities early in the new year. Uh, for as early as mid-February. One of our viewers is a marine ecology, marine biology and wildlife ecology student in college and is asking, how do you get to be a part of this team? This would be a dream job. Check out our opportunities on our website for um, marine internships. There are all kinds of um, positions you can intern in. We currently have an intern who's acting as data logger. And once again, the room behind us, it looks like that has the glass is where we conduct those classroom interactions um, or if someone needs to do a presentation for an organization or an academic meeting, they can do that back there. Seems like we were on a steeper slope against a steeper wall and they were more pillowy lava and this seems more like a tailless slope as it gets gentler but still looks kind of encrusted and consolidated. Maybe. It's been kind of changing back and forth between pillows and talus. Yeah. One of our viewers is asking about the bright white spots on the rocks. Do you know what those are? Sometimes when we've been zooming in on those, they've been barnacles. So yeah, sometimes gastropods. Yeah. Sometimes just old, old fast. 
Nice one. Yeah. Wonder if it's that Atlantisella again, but like an older one. Atlantisella, yeah. Four structures are awesome in this guy. Yeah, it's funny how the underside has those, yeah, those like tubes. Yeah. The openings you can see at the top. Got the tubes now. They look like they're like drooping down the roots mm -hmm. or something there, huh? That's like air roots. Yeah. Lots of shrimp. Come a little wider, Dave. That's great. Can we zoom on one of those like tiny pink associates right there? A the little shrimp's there. Oh, is it a tiny shrimp? Tiny shrimp. It is. Thank you. Backgrounds meet there. Yeah. Got to come up soon. Slopes incoming. Raj, pull right there, please. Yeah. Okay, ready? It's a really tall stock, but I didn't see anything on the end of it. It's just laying down. That's a very long one. Yeah. As long as Hercules. Wow. Greetings to our viewer from Germany who has not missed a dive for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? And Sarah, just to confirm, 2,700 meters is going to be where we collect our next rock, correct? That's correct. Okay. Gotcha. I don't. I don't think we're going to get to 2,700 until after the okay. Midwater Transit. Uh. Raj. Okay. Because so that's still at. Uh, that's between waypoint six and seven, and seven still at 2,780. Mm -hmm. So Raj. it'll be between seven and eight. Guys, we lucked out then. We don't get any blue water for this. <laughs> yeah, they might be able to do a partial tow and just get down to the bottom of the slope and crawl back up fast. This one's a lot heavily predated yeah. bamboo yeah. coral. But is there the culprit 